Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q1 FY23 Earnings Conference Call of Trivani Turbine Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance to the conference call, signal an operator by pressing star 10 zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rishabh Barat from CBR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good day, everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you participating in the Q1 FY 2023 earnings conference call of Triveni Turbine Limited. We have with us today on the call Mr. Nikhil Soni, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Arun Mote, Executive Director, Mr. S. N. Prasad, President, Global Sales Product, Mr. Sachin Parab, President, Global Sales Aftermarket. Ms. Surbhi Channa, Investor Relations and Value Creation, along with other members of the senior management team. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature, and a statement to this effect has been included in the invite, which was mailed to everybody earlier. I would also like to emphasize that while this call is open to all invitees, it may not be broadcasted or reproduced in any form or manner. We will start this call with opening remarks from the management, following which we will have an interactive question and answer session. I now request Mr. Nikhil Soni to share some perspectives with you with regard to the operations and outlook for the business. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Rishabh. A, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and my apologies for starting this call a little bit late, technical issues. But I'm very pleased to report uh, the results for your company, Triveni Turbine, for the first quarter, FY23. And uh, we've had a very we started the year off in a very positive note. I'm happy to report that we have had another high in our order booking for a single quarter at 3.6 billion rupees. And this is also coupled with a very strong closing order book as well as a performance in terms of an all-time high EBITDA as well as uh, revenue. It places us very well for the growth that we forecast for this current year, but also forecast for what we believe to be the growth in the next year as well. But some of the highlights on a consolidated basis, the revenue from operations in the first quarter of FI23 stood at 2.59 billion rupees, which is a decrease of 40.7%. The EBITDA for the quarter was at 561 million, which was up by 35.8% with a margin of 21.7%. The profit before tax was at 50 point, sorry, 508 million in the first quarter, which is an increase of 39.1% with flattish margins of 19.6%. The PAC for the quarter was at 383 million, an increase of 37.8%. We also had the highest ever quarterly order booking of 3.6 billion rupees during the first quarter and a record outstanding carry forward order book on the 30th of June of 10.7 billion rupees. Coming to some of the financial metrics, during the quarter under review, operations, revenue from operations grew by 41% as compared to the previous year with the domestic sales showing an increase of 32% to 1.6 billion while the export turnover increased by 59% to 966 million rupees, reflecting both the post-pandemic macro recovery in the domestic as well as international markets, and the company's success in its international orders as well. As a result, the mix of the domestic and export sales changed to 30 to 63, 37, 63% uh, and 37 uh, export in Q1 FY23 as compared to 67% domestic and 33% export in Q1 FY22. The, the EBITDA increased by 36% to 561 million as against 413 million in the previous financial year of the same quarter. And EBIT, while EBITDA margins declined by 70 basis points to 21.7% as against 22.4% in the previous quarter of the last financial year. The decline in EBITDA margins in the first quarter over the last year is largely attributable to higher raw material costs, but as you can see, the, our operating leverage, our change in product mix, and our forecast to change in product mix in the quarters to come lead us to believe that we do not have a, a margin problem and we will maintain our PBT 
for the full year as well as at our future years at above 20 percent. The profit after tax of this quarter grew at 38 percent as I already stated. Order booking, which is a record high for this quarter, was stood at 3.6 billion rupees as opposed to 2.7 billion rupees in the first quarter of FY22, which is an increase of 31 percent. The domestic order booking during the quarter grew by by 26%, while the export order booking grew by 44%. I'm happy to share that in a short span of time of our augmenting our capacity in the South African development community region with our acquisition of TSE engineering uh, in the last quarter, the company has bagged a significant services contract for large steam turbines in this region, uh, which is for utility turbines. We've accounted for this for, nine, for, 100, for 190 million rupees in this quarter, but we believe the size of this contract is far larger at approximately uh, over 1 billion rupees. This is, a, this is a new area for us to enter where we are going to be looking at expanding our servicing reach, which allows us to cater to the servicing and O&M requirements of large customers, but also allows us then to further sell on other parts and services which, are, which, which could be at much higher margins. While this was not forecast in our budget, we believe that though this may be a slightly lower uh, margin business from the aftermarket perspective, this will not impact our overall margins of the company and in fact would give us greater impetus for future growth, not only in the current region, but by expanding this, this service offering to other parts of the world. We've continued to see growth in our other markets of API turbines as well as the entire range of 0 to 100 megawatt steam turbines. This coupled with our increased focus on the aftermarket leads us to believe that the, that the coming quarters will continue to see growth in order booking and we are confident that by the end of this financial year that we will have a substantially higher order booking than we did starting in FY23. The inquiry generation in this quarter and the international side grew by 22% as further confidence in our, un, in, in, in our further confidence of the uh, opening up of export markets, especially in Southeast Asia, as well as some parts of North America and South America. On an outlook perspective, we believe that our capacity expansions, which we had started in the, last financial, in the last quarter of the financial year and the quarter before that would be complete by September of this year and our augmented capacity would be sufficient to cater to the demand that our order book is creating. We believe that our expanded capacity of about 200 to 250 turbines per annum would be sufficient for us in the short to medium term. Uh, this coupled with our supply chain initiatives do not lead us to believe that execution would be a worry. The pandemic has expanded and opened up different markets for us, and as you, could, as you can tell from the recent war in, in Ukraine, that energy markets are at an all-time high, which is leading to confidence for power generation, both in upstream and downstream oil and gas markets. This, coupled with a historical push on the renewable energy markets, leads us to have increased confidence for sustaining demand throughout this current year, but also stemming into FY24. The company continues to invest in technologies at the higher end of the spectrum, which not only allow us to
we will look for more success in the in the quarters after that. Okay, sir. Got it. Got it. And uh, uh, with respect to the South Africa, uh, uh, the the uh, AMC orders, so basically you you had mentioned about the profit margins being slightly on the lower side. So is it relative to the regular after sales uh, margins that uh, generally we get? Uh, and uh, is it the, the above the company level overall company level margins, or should we look at it at a, a below company level margin? So if you can give some reference, it will be great. You know, as you would imagine that uh, uh, parts is a much more lucrative segment, and when we look at aftermarket, that is uh, uh, disproportionate in its contribution towards margin. Uh, mm -hmm. When we look at servicing, as it is, it's on a slightly lower end. And when we go to the lower end of servicing, such as O&M, it is mm -hmm. a slightly lower margin than that. But having said that, this is not a constraint when we look at our entire overall portfolio. We would be maintaining the overall margins as a company. And I think that uh, that is what, but what is more encouraging about this is that this opens up a very vast revenue field for us and much, much more rapid revenue growth. Uh, the possibilities for us to leverage our capabilities of handling large utility turbines can be leveraged in many parts of the world. Uh, and, and we believe that, that we're adequately poised to, to capture uh, this market. I, I'd, I'd like Sachin Parag, who's uh, uh, our president of Global uh, uh, Aftermarket, to just comment a little bit about uh, where this can go. Sachin? Hello? Okay, um, but, but, but suffice to say, Ravi, that, uh, uh, that once we are with the customer, we think that we would be able to, given our quality systems and the fact that we have uh, 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 an increased use of digital tools in terms of being able to assess uh, the, the, the current status and life of turbines, that we would be able to push an upgradation cycle which could then be quite lucrative for us, for us from the parts business. We could also leverage the credentials and capabilities of having run large utility turbines uh, in the domestic as well as other Southeast Asian and uh, uh, North American markets. And so we believe that this uh, opens up an entirely new revenue stream for us. But regardless of that, we are seeing enormous growth in, the, uh, in our auto booking, which will translate to a sustained 35% plus revenue growth for the next couple of years. Got it, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Mas, Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I just wanted to understand the uh, margin bit. So there is some decline in the gross margin considering the increase in the raw material prices. Now, post the correction, uh, do you see any upside in the margins from the current base? You know, what is important, I think, to remember is that uh, we, we we operate in a duopolistic market domestically and an oligopolistic market internationally. So margins, and, and when we work with our customers, we like to work with our customers for the life cycle of their product, which is uh, 25 plus years. And so therefore, while we have the ability to increase prices and we have the ability to expand margins, we believe that it's more important to take our customers along with us. And so what? So when you see uh, our margin profile of the first quarter uh, with a higher raw material as a of sales at nearly 57%, firstly, we believe that is that when we look at our own supply chain base and uh, that is not something that, that will come down over the coming quarters, both because the product mix will change increasingly towards export as well as in a higher degree of aftermarket. But secondly, we would also absorb a lot of the raw material prices and there has been a reversion in raw material prices also. Uh, so we see the longer term contracts that we have would not uh, would, would then get revised downwards. Secondly, is what, now to what extent will, we, will that lead to margin expansion versus uh, us transferring that to our customers? Um, uh, I think that, that, that we are happy and sufficient with having margins at least at 20%. We would be upset when margins go below that. So our attempt would be always to maintain margins at a higher level than that. And when I mean margins, I'm talking about PBT. So uh, we may have possibilities to expand margins and they may go up and they probably should in terms of the fact that we have a better revenue mix and declining commodity prices as well as higher uh, aftermarket sales. So um, I, I may be a roundabout answer, but I, I think we do have confidence, but I wouldn't like you to, to project that. Got it, got it. No, sure. Uh, uh, other question on the uh, what previous participant were ask, asking about the uh, last turbine more than 30 megawatts. So uh, what is the percentage share of uh, that 
segment in the current closing order book is it negligible no it's actually quite, uh, it's 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 upwards of uh, 10% of the current uh, order book uh, and we believe that uh, it will uh, increase in the coming quarters did we recognize any revenue from debt uh, uh, large turbines in the q1 quarter yes we did okay C can you tell me what percentage uh, broad range uh, i don't think that's necessary to go into details like that please uh, fine no issue thank you so much thank you thank you the next question is the line of ankit babal from shubham ventures please go ahead uh <clears throat> uh good afternoon sir uh, two questions from my side first is historically you have mentioned uh, uh, that you know in your segment there are no big uh, inorganic opportunities i mean big in the sense from uh, ticket size point of view uh, so and technology wise as you mentioned that we don't hello yes yes i'm right here yeah so <clears throat> and technology wise you said that you you people are amongst the best so do, you don't need that you so just wanted to understand the reason for increasing the cash balance in the balance sheet and not paying it as a, a dividend because uh, one more thing which i mentioned was that you'll take care of the capital allocation policy and the return ratios of the company so if you have no other options for the cash you will distribute it you bring up a very good point but i think that uh, as you look at our i'm sure you may have got our annual report by now already you see from our annual report that that a lot of the cash pile that we have is driven by a negative working capital uh, as well as high customer advances these are technically liabilities that we have to do have to fulfill at some point in time now if you take the fact that we are operationally efficient as a as an operation um, uh, and and exclude that from our cash pile i think we are, we we are well uh, positioned right now also while i may have talked about expansion capital pile the dividend of course currently which we had announced in uh, at the end of the financial year fy22 has not been paid it will be paid only after the agm and so therefore the cash pile will decline post uh, uh, payment of that dividend but suffice to say that your point is well understood that uh, that uh, what will we be doing with our cash pile i think that uh, 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 we think at this point in time it's really not a problem for us Uh, that we are constraining our, either our return metrics uh, or uh, or that we are being uh, uh, not complying with our with our dividend uh, payout ratios etc so i think that uh, we will continue to to maintain payouts to our to our um, shareholders but at this point in time given the fact that uh, what our customer advances are given the fact that that we do have liabilities attached with that we think that we are sufficiently poised in our cash balance but i believe you people will maintain this negative working capital kind of a uh, you know scenario going forward also so every time you will have uh, cash flows but that's that but that's what i meant we'd like just to be prudent it's not for any other reason and okay. so why when we believe that it becomes a problem then we will take appropriate action and of course this is something that is subject to the board's decision okay okay and my second question was that you know um, um on you know there is a big overhang of the supply from triveni engineering i mean the stock sale which you people had announced uh you know so just wanted to understand can you exp expedite that process of uh, you know selling so that there is no overhang on the stock price uh, you know you uh, you bring up a point which is not in
market is opening up quite considerably for us. We are quite hopeful that this market will contribute to, contribute meaningfully for us in terms of growth, but it will never replace the growth of that we are seeing from the overall uh, um, renewable energy market in the short term. Okay. So I, I uh, take your point, but just uh, the first thing in uh, new product is uh, getting, uh, or in oil and gas spaces, getting product approval. And uh, so that product approval we have cleared across the, all the continents, okay? And uh, from all the engineering companies or designers. Now, to win the orders, that is where we are working on. But the, and the, what type of tickets are we seeing in that side of the business? Uh, no, no, before, so, so we are seeing extremely large capex in this market. This we are seeing both from the domestic market, which is not only from downstream, but also upstream oil and gas in the domestic market, but increasingly so from the fertilizer segment. We also see very large investments internationally coming from uh, a variety of different uh, large uh, utilities, be it from shale gas all the way up. So there is uh, there's a lot of capex happening in this market. Yes, one thing, which is our uh, domestic market, okay, in, the, in India. Uh, see, who would you be competing with? Is there local manufacturers or the product is completely imported, uh, uh, the turbines, uh, smaller turbines? Uh, can yeah, you just yes, uh, give some idea? Oh, right. This is, this is, this is a, 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 an import substitution market. Okay. And uh, one more thing. So in uh, government uh, contracts, okay, there was this thing that below a certain price point, uh, domestic uh, manufacturers should be given a preference. Okay? And many of the fertilizer and uh, petrochemical companies and uh, refineries are government companies. So do we get any preference in those businesses or uh, uh, there is yet no preference in the ticket size uh, where you are operating in API grade uh, uh, turbines? You know, I'm, I, 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 I'm almost certain, I, I don't know if Prasad is back online. Uh, are you there, Prasad? Can you answer this question as to whether we see any price preference uh, uh, for, for this market with domestic PSUs in the oil and gas segment? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, so there is no price preference for uh, domestic suppliers as of now. Even our competitors who we were offering, they also produce these, uh, they, they also manufacture the turbine in India. Even if uh, PSUs comes with any price preference, uh, so that will be uh, 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 equal to both the parties. So we are not, uh, not looking forward to that. We will be competing based on the technology merit and uh, delivery mechanism. Now see, uh, earlier when it was stated that, that EPI oil and gas uh, were import substituted, okay? so when it was stated that it is import substituted, that's why this uh, second Yes, yes. This, this is, yes, uh, you are right for some cases, but uh, in some cases uh, there is a local player, our competitors, they also have some manufacturing facility. So even right now there is no, even those cases wherever uh, the imports happening, so there is no subsidy for uh, domestic uh, manufacturers as of now for this rotating okay. equipment of turbine. And, uh, in what percentage of uh, products would be import substitute means let's say a number of turbines which are used or uh, what percentage you know, I, I think as we as we get into this market we'll have more information and we'll we'll, we'll get that out to you uh, I, but i think the fact is that the market is quite large and as we are seeing our, um, uh, our approvals from the OEMs, we see this contributing to our inquiry book substantially and, and will eventually form a part of our order booking in a meaningful manner going forward. But as you rightly point out that we do see demand coming from a variety of different segments and this is just one segment. Okay, okay. And uh, the earlier when we entered this business, the thought was this can be a pretty large market, okay? So that's the uh, uh, thought remains the same, okay? Or, uh, the probability of this business also becoming very large is high. It may take time, but yeah, uh, we remain uh, confident uh, now also as we were earlier when we entered the business. No, you're very right. We do say we, uh, we, we are confident about this, this business line. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you very much. Mm. Yeah.
The next question is from the line of Tushar from Kamsia Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. 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 Good afternoon, sir. Uh, congratulations for a great set of numbers. Uh, sir, I have a couple of questions. My first question is on the KPEX. In the last call, uh, you said like you'll be investing 35 to 40 crores, uh, expanding the, the the facility to 200 to 250 turbines. Uh, so it's fair to assume that considering your asset turn of year to three, we can get incremental revenue of 100 to 120 CR. So, uh, no, it will be more than the, the, the asset turn may be more, but uh, but I don't. I think uh, if, uh, can you can you give give some visibility as to how much capacity utilization you may see of the facility and when may it be ready? Yes, uh, as you know, we are building one more bay in our new Sompura facility. Uh, we already have the most of the capex done, and it will be complete in Q2 we'll be able to capitalize all the capital expenditure uh, which is required for expansion. The capacity will be flexible. It will be somewhere between 250 numbers to 350 numbers, depending on how much outsourcing we are able to do and what our subcontract we do, because that would also determine the capacity. Uh, in uh, Whatever capex we have indicated to you in a keyword meeting, we are not exceeding that. We are continuing with it. And we expect that uh, by uh, Q3 met, even our subcontractors' expansions will be complete and will be fully operational. It would definitely mean an, mean, uh, mean an additional revenue in the current year, which we have already planned for, and in the coming years also. And this will be, sub, sub, uh, this capacity what we are building is likely to be sufficient for a couple of years for us. There is not expected any capital expenditure for this. Does it answer your question? Uh, sir, actually, the incremental revenue, I was trying to get some color on. No, the main thing is that we, I think what Arun is saying and what I think we've said in our previous calls is that we're not a capacity constrained company and the fact that if that our capital employed may be used for cap, cap, capacity expansion, but our supply chain initiatives in terms of actually having a vast degree of outsourcing also does add amply to our capacity. So uh, very frankly, if you look at what what is a greater indication of our asset turns and and ratios like that would be by just looking at our revenue growth, which would be the commitment that we have to fulfill the orders that are part of our auto booking, and uh, and and so the fact that we are seeing 35 percent plus, plus growth in the next couple of years can give you an indication of whatever turns you want to see in our assets. Fair enough, sir. Uh, sir, my second question would be, uh, sir, how do you oh, see the dominant going? Hello? Oh, yes, please. Am I audible, sir? Ah, I mean, the main... Ah, I'm audible. You are audible. Please call me. Sir, in coming to this year, where do we see the top line growing? Like, Rajesh the product down, is, uh, you know, uh, is customized. Or they are different clients. So, any, any idea on uh, in coming two to three years on the top line? Uh, yeah, I think I alluded to this already. I think that we have.
Uh, yeah, hi, uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, I mean, uh, you, you did allude to some uh, some line on FY24 also. I mean, just wanted to get an understanding. I mean, you know, this demand environment that we are seeing. Uh, what is the longevity of that? Uh, and my second question was on the margin profile. I mean, is the uh, zero to 30 megawatt uh, or 30 megawatt are the margin profile? <laughs> No, the margin profiles don't change substantially with uh, with um, um, uh, the, the capacity of turbines. Uh, they, they, it depends on competitive intensity, but more than that is the specifications. The higher the specifications, uh, the higher the the uh, the margins. Uh, there's certain historical markets which give you lower margins. There's certain markets which give you higher margins. As you would imagine, markets where customers are concerned more on price to give you lower margins and markets where customers are concerned more about efficiency and uh, robustness and other features which, uh, which are important to the industrial process, those give you higher margins. And this is consistent through the entire range. So, uh, so we don't see margins changing specifically. For example, the API segment, which has much more focus on uh, health and safety and, uh, uh, and other constraints on, in terms of fire, etc., uh, is a much higher margin uh, business. Uh, aftermarket, as you know, is a higher margin business for us it, as an as a entirety, but you have the entire spectrum within it. You have servicing, which is slightly lower. You have refurbishment, which can vary in terms of the scope, and parts, which is a very high uh, margin business. But in all, when we calculate our growth and we look at uh, 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 the margin profile of the company going forward, and like I stressed a couple of times, we don't, we don't see margins as being a problem for us. Uh, we we aim and are confident of maintaining a PVT margin in excess of twenty percent. Sure, sure. <clears throat> and the longevity of this uh, growth that we are currently seeing. Yeah. So so well, you know, there's certain markets which are new to us where we have expanded the the market in which we operate. Uh, one is that uh, our direct focus in the 30 to 100 megawatt segment, which is a market which is approximately on a global basis, one and a half times the size of the market below 30 megawatts, seems to suggest, and already are, are the successes that we've had, that we will have uh, a good growth in this market, which should sustain uh, um, our visibility as well as then auto booking. Similarly, in the API market where we have low market share right now, as we see going forward, that we will we should aim to to get uh, a better market share as we increase our presence and uh, increase uh, our reference bases with uh, with customers. So that coupled with the fact that uh, in an aftermarket space as well, we see a greater presence on the ground with our customers, which should aid in getting more revenue. We think that uh, the 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 auto booking trajectory can be sustained for several years. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of fire as from Progressive Shares. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Good afternoon, sir. So I have a couple of questions. Like, so these are basically a few of the extracts from the annual report. The first one being, how do you see the market in Germany in terms of uh, waste to energy steam turbine generators that are already commissioned there? Uh, no, I wouldn't like to speak specifically about any particular market, if that's fine. But in general, uh, Europe has, uh, has, a, has a great focus in incineration of municipal solid waste. And this is being driven by a, vari a variety of different uh, uh, impetuses. One is, the, is that regulation is not allowing for, uh, uh, for dumping of uh, municipal waste into municipal dumps because of leachate and other carcinogens that, uh, that are created in groundwater. Also, given the fact that dumps lead to, the, leads, leads to emission of methane. And so therefore, uh, the fact that a municipal solid waste incineration plant would, uh, would generate uh, carbon dioxide as opposed to methane is, has, is deemed as clean. And so, therefore, it is. It is. It comes under the subject of uh, uh, of the of uh, certain CDM uh, benefits, and therefore, uh, both local as well as uh, country-specific grants. So we see this as a as a very large segment. Of course, Europe is as a leader in the environmental sense and decarbonization has taken the lead in it. But we believe that the economics of this uh, will, uh, will 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 be true uh, globally. Okay, okay. 
the second one be uh, could you highlight more on these uh, newly developed sub uh, 3 megawatt products that cater to demand for your prds in terms of market size or growth opportunities yeah i'd, I'd like uh, arun uh, can you speak a little bit more about this segment which is part of our annual report yeah these are uh, turbines which are standard turbines and these are uh, made and stocked and stocked and sold these are not against the orders uh, we are developing market this is uh, something which will go through not only our sales force but also through a di distributor network that's how it's coming we are building the market we should be able to give you a more size of the market in the coming years because this is something which is developing and we see positive uh, increase in the inquiries in almost uh, each quarter okay okay and uh, so in terms of uh, the aftermarket business having uh, laying its foray into new industrial segments such as your geothermal and your compressors so do you see any uh, scale up in the contribution to this division along with the order wins that has come in this quarter from fadc yeah my, my colleague sachin would answer but i would like to tell you that uh, uh, we have very positive references on geothermal market not only uh, in uh, almost all industrial areas which is in, in southeast asia and also in the australian new zealand australian continent sachin please uh, so good afternoon in terms of the geothermal uh, market we have good traction and uh, we are seeing continued inquiries uh, in this segment so our efforts in the geothermal segment are paying off so mote has mentioned about some of the geographies and in all these geographies we are seeing consistent business and repeat inquiries Thank okay you. so have you seen any inquiries for the current quarter for this division yes very much so i think i i think let's not get into specific segments for inquiries and and order booking but suffice to say that on a year in year basis our penetration to this market has improved we're seeing not only greater visibility on inquiry basis but also as part of our order booking okay okay and one last thing so in last uh, conference call you had mentioned that you had to reduce the order book of about uh, 400 million on account of the ukraine invasion so i understand you have even mentioned that the percentage contribution is not very large so are these orders near execution or some part of uh, it has already seen uh, oh, they're, they're on hold the entire is on hold yes and and i think that uh, to be to be fair we we don't see this uh, coming back into the order book uh, very soon so we will look to divert whatever that is part of our inventory arun can you comment yeah these orders were uh, at different levels of execution some in engineering some where where the raw material has been bought uh, they are successfully getting diverted and we don't see any major impact of this orders which are on hold which we expect eventually to get cancelled uh, we 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 won't be affected in our operations at all in this okay okay thank you so much Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhilash Hiran, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, so I just uh, can you qu uh, quantitatively express uh, express the cost benefit for a company who is putting up a steam turbine or versus alternative competitive products. Uh, I, I, you see, in a variety of different applications in 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 a steam ter, in a steel industry, uh, one is power generation that they need for their own operations, and the second is um, capturing heat as part of uh, uh, from their furnace, etc. Uh, now, the, the capturing heat as part of their from their from their furnace. is is the, i don't think there exists alternate technologies apart from uh, it being captured through a a a a a boiler a steam basis at this current point in time uh, well of course our solution of concentrated uh, of supercritical uh, carbon dioxide hello very sanjeev and we lost the line for the management request you to please hold while we reconnect them
Ladies and gentlemen, we have the line for the management reconnected. Over to you, sir. Uh, my apologies about that. I, I I did say at the beginning that we were experiencing some technical difficulties, so I apologize again. But like I said, the first application on waste heat recovery doesn't seem to have any alternate solutions. While for a steel industry in specific, which doesn't use uh, 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 which doesn't use uh, steam as part of the process, their power generation requirements could be fed through other means, uh, be it uh, uh, be it uh, uh, from the grid or a variety of different sources. But generally, because of the remoteness of steel plants, they do end up generating on site. Also, because they do end up importing coke for their current furnaces. If, even if the furnace moves to a hydrogen base, the fact is that it would still emit heat, and so therefore we would still need a technology like the steam turbine to capture that heat. I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, no, sir. So could you just like uh, um, what what my question basically was that uh, if 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 I'm uh, using a steam turbine versus say a DG set. So, so uh, or or uh, any other alternative uh, forms of generating electricity. So then, what would be the per unit uh, benefit of using a steam turbine? Uh, you know, just across various industries. If you in the last call you had said that you'll come up with some uh, white paper for this, which gives us a better understanding. So, uh, from that perspective, you could just share some broad numbers of use of the benefit of using a steam turbine. Okay, um, I, I, I can give this to you because I know this from the sugar industry, where you have a cost of the gas somewhere in the region of about, let's say, 800 rupees a ton. Uh, the, the typical cost of generation of, of power, um, without counting the cost of heat, because you're using steam, uh, uh, you're using um, uh, steam as part of the process as well. You have a, a cost, and you have a cost somewhere in the region of between one rupee fifty to one rupee eighty paisa. Uh, now, if you include uh, a margin on the heat transfer as well, you could probably get that cost down to maybe one rupee, one rupee ten. But of course, all of this is dependent on your cost of fuel. So, uh, so I think you can calculate a variety of different ways. But suffice to say, if there is a heating requirement as part of the industrial process, which which uh, which which would be there in industries such as uh, chemicals, petrochemicals, agro, food, paper, sugar, rubber, textiles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, it always makes sense for you to generate on site. Okay, okay. So for heat, yes, sir. Sorry. Yeah, because 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 you, your thermal efficiency is much higher. Okay, okay. And sir, at what scale does it make sense? Like, uh, uh, the industry has to reach a third, certain threshold or to uh, for them to uh, to install a steam turbine uh, from an economic standpoint. Well, actually, the thing is, it, 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 it may be, it's basically when, when you're a continuous process industry, that it makes sense. The size and capacity would change depending on the size and capacity of the industry and its requirement. But as long as it's continuous, then it makes sense for you to go into this. If it's a discontinuous or uh, a batch process, et cetera, then, then, then uh, it probably doesn't make sense for you to have a steam turbine because for you to get it operating, it does take some time and it's not, not the best solution. Okay, okay. Uh, so I'm sorry, uh, coming to the waste heat recovery, uh, could you give us a sense on uh, what is the penetration levels in uh, for waste heat recovery in steel and cement? Uh, yeah, Prasad, would, can you give an idea as to what is the penetration? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, especially when it comes to cement industry, now uh, majority of the cement industries are uh, trying to tap the waste heat uh, our uh, penetration today as on today based on our statistics almost 30 percent of the steel uh, uh, industry, uh, cement industry they are go they have gone for uh, waste heat recovery options or some projects are in the pipeline still we feel that around 70 percent potential there of that when it comes to steel industry almost like a sponge iron kiln so 100% of the sponger and kiln, when they're installing itself, they go for a waste heat uh, recovery option. As this new sponge iron and uh, pig iron plants are coming, there will be opportunity for that. Whereas in cement, whatever the installed base, uh, running uh, cement plant, there is a 70% of the cement plant yet to tap this uh, potential. And so what would be that number for steel? Uh, you said 70% for cement, and what would be uh, uh, the number for steel? Uh, no, steel, as they install the plant, uh, uh, parallelly mm -hmm. they go with this uh, waste heat recovery tapping because uh, the mm -hmm. waste heat, whatever uh, gets out of those kilns, that is a huge waste heat. So they get the permissions only once uh, they show this uh, tapping of this waste heat and converting into the power. 
Okay, so currently, whatever steel capacity they have, all have installed the uh, waste heat uh, recovery. Is that the correct oh, understanding? The iron, yeah, especially sponge iron and pig iron plant. Uh, that that is the segment. Otherwise, integrated steel plants. Yes, everybody installed uh, uh, capturing this waste heat. Okay, okay, sir. Sir, and in the annual report, uh, uh, under the inventory section, you have mentioned that the cost of inventory which I've expensed out is around 54 crores. So can you explain what is it exactly? Uh, Lalit, if you could just explain what this, uh, what this means exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, so this 54 crore is nothing but the change in inventory which has happened during the year. So uh, the overall inventory has reduced by 54 crore during the year. Uh, but the operating, uh, uh, Arun, I think you can give a better idea as to the operating, what, is, what, what, what has led to this has been a more efficient uh, manufacture of, of, uh, of through our modular systems that we actually had better procurement of inventory and we had better turnover of inventory. Yes, uh, we could manage the inventory well. We utilize the old inventory and also through standardization, we could decrease the uh, when w, uh, WIP, uh, because uh, quite a few assemblies could be used in multiple places. The number no, number of turns on inventory also has gone up marginally. Totally, our working capital has uh, re improved substantially, and we are uh, once again on a negative working capital to a, to, with a very good number. And we hope that we will continue this. Okay, okay. And so what is our domestic market share right now? It's in excess of 50%. Also, also, also we've seen historically the number at 60%. So uh, why is there a fall from 50, 60 to 50? So we're expanding our market as we speak. So we are capturing newer market and newer market segments. Uh, and, and so therefore, uh, uh, but, but there, is, there is some competitive intensity in the market as well. Uh, so I think a lot of these factors are going in. Our focus is also more on the export market. The, the reason that we like to maintain a, a, a majority market share is so that we are able to maintain our cost structures. And that has been our real impetus rather than actually capturing more market share in India because India, is, as you know, is, a, is not a lucrative market for us. It's, it's not what drives our profitability. Right. Right, sir. Uh, and the la one last question was: uh, So, what will it? Uh, uh, what would? What will be our export market share? You know, we don't have full visibility into the export market, so uh, the, the fact is that the, that the, that's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, what we do like to look at and as a benchmark for our success in the export market is the growth of our inquiry book. The reason I say that is uh, getting an inquiry in a sophisticated space like a steam turbine is allowing the customer to view your offer. So he's ready to accept you. Uh, and so that is a very big win for us and our conversion from inquiry book when they do come up is, is high. I wouldn't like to share that number, but, uh, but we, we do see a uh, good conversion for my inquiry book to our auto booking. And one, sorry? Yes, sir, you were saying? No, uh, no, yeah. So, so I, I think that we do see uh, 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 increasing our penetration to the global market on an annual basis. Actually, it's happening on a quarterly basis. Now that we're selling above 30 megawatts as well internationally and having good market uh, and having good penetration in that market, you'll see this number only. And so, uh, finally, uh, could you explain a bit on this uh, supercritical uh, CO2 turbine that you are working on? What is the progress? Where have we reached? And uh, how is it globally panning out? No, like I said, this is a, this is a project that we first have to pilot and then we'll have to commercialize it. So it is, uh, it is a part of it is in development, part of it is in engineering, part of the, 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 the entire train is in, uh, uh, we have confidence in terms of the supply chain and manufacture, some we have to develop. Uh, it's, it's a little way away in terms of a couple of years, but we think the solution, uh, both on paper as well as it's, uh, testing is something that uh, that we're working aggressively on with our partners at uh, uh, in University of Science as well as at other academic institutions. Uh, we're optimistic that this can provide a much better economics to our to our customers. Uh, of course, we have, there's some other work that we're doing on the transcritical side, which is which has uh, which 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 could show uh, uh, quicker uh, uh, results from piloting. 
But we, we, as and when that happens, we'd be happy to let you know. But I think let it first get into some commercial, some some degree of piloting before before we give you uh, a, a more data on uh, on how it's performing. Right, and so this this uh, this type of uh, turbine is no, nowhere in application in the world currently, right? No, I, we have heard of uh, uh, Siemens launching this with uh, a company that they call uh, that they own called EcoGen. Uh, in uh, in uh, uh, in somewhere in Canada, uh, and uh, uh, I, I think that uh, Mitsubishi has also done some development on this line. I don't know how well it's commercialized as yet, but very frankly, it's what we feel that Triveni turbines uh, developments in this space are being done at the same pace and at the same level that is being done by our global peers. And uh, so we, it's also confidence in the fact that this technology will have a, a uh, more people promoting it. So that's also positive. We understand our cost structure and our cost structure is good. So ultimately it's a question of uh, market development. Thank you. I would request um, Sangran to rejoin me for follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Amit Mahavar from Eagle Wise. Please go ahead. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah. Hi, Nikhil. Hi, Nikhil. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, hi. So congratulations on great serve numbers and the large service win uh, in the uh, export market. I have two quick questions. First is on uh, the uh, hiring plan for what is the current uh, you know, uh, strength for after sales, uh, sales force out of India, and how should it ramp up in the next maybe uh, one to two years? That's the second, first question. The second question is on breakup of uh, API drive turbine uh, servicing globally. Uh, how large is the market, and uh, uh, what percentage of total um, 30 to 100 megawatt uh, uh, market is basically after sales for API turbines? Thank you. No, no. API turbines are all small. They're pretty much below five megawatts. So, firstly, that's the that, that's okay. That okay. So, but you do have the API power generation market. Those are much more lumpy, and and those are for power generation, not for drive. Nothing, nothing is driven at, at such a high megawatt capacity. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the recruitment, as you know, in the last financial year, we added nearly 10% uh, increase to our workforce. Our plans uh, in this uh, financial year are, are quite aggressive as well. And uh, from the aftermarket in specific, as you talked about, I wouldn't like to give you a number of our service engineers and how many we're adding because, uh, I, I, yeah, it's a little sensitive. But suffice to say, our strategy is to be closer to our customers. And so to that extent, what's more important is for us to have a greater degree of aftermarket personnel internationally. Uh, Sachin, can you provide uh, Amit some, clarity, uh, some, some uh, uh, insights into how you're seeing the, your recruitment? Yes, so uh, we will be definitely uh, increasing our field force. Uh, we have been doing that consistently. And we don't just depend on our uh, own uh, engineers. We also have a network of uh, trained service personnel in different markets that we have developed over the years, and these complement our own field force. There's a lot of supervision done by the personnel themselves, and we are continuously looking at increasing our uh, strength of our field forcing services. Sure, oh, thank you. Nikhil, can I have yeah, one more question? Um, uh, what is the current map market in India only on uh, uh, you know, uh, refinery like Cogen, maybe ethanol or otherwise, what is the current market mapping that we have for the India total opportunity, maybe two, three years, uh, total pipeline? In the distilleries market, uh, 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 Prasad, can you give an insight as to how many distilleries you have, number of distilleries you have in your inquiry book? Yeah, uh, today from the inquiry book wise, uh, uh, see, a uh, total permission of a distillery is over 400 distilleries uh, got the licenses. Otherwise, today, active inquiry uh, book is closer to around 40 distilleries uh, in our inquiry pipeline from domestic market. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for participating in our Q1 FY23 conference call. I apologize for our technical glitches. Um, we will try to remedy, to remedy them for our next call.
Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. On behalf of Trivani Turbine Limited, that concludes this panel. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.